Hello, and welcome back to part two of our series on scholarships. We are so glad that you are joining us. My name is Erin Korsball. I am Program Officer for Scholarships at the Ronald Reagan Presidential Foundation and Institute. We're really glad that you're here with us. If this, today is your first time, you didn't join us for session one, we'd love for you to go back and listen to our first part of our scholarship series. We'll put the link in the chat momentarily. Um, but we are spending this month talking about scholarships talking about demystifying this complicated and overwhelming process for students who are headed to college um, in the fall or in years to come. Uh, we know that it is a very confusing process for students and for their parents, and we are thrilled to be able to share our knowledge about scholarships with you. And I'm so excited today that we have some of our recipients of our GE Reagan Foundation Scholarship Program with us to share their very own personal experience winning hundreds of thousands of, of dollars in scholarships. Um, we're gonna introduce them to you very shortly, but I wanted to highlight for you a couple of programs that we run here at the foundation and might make the connect the dots as to why we're putting on this program about scholarships. Well, we run a program called the GE Reagan Foundation Scholarship Program. This is a national scholarship program. It's open right now. It will close on January 5th. So if you are a high school senior and you excel in leadership, drive, integrity, and citizenship, we want you to apply for this scholarship. There are many scholarships nationwide. We want you to apply for this one. We also have a, a local scholarship program for students in Ventura County, California. That'll be opening up very shortly. The Reagan Foundation also runs lots of other education programs. We have a great communicator debate series where if you excel in uh, speech and debate, we want you to participate in that competition and you can earn yourself some scholarships as well. Finally, for college students, we have our Leadership in the American Presidency program, which is a scholarship program for students who are going to Washington DC to intern and to pursue a leadership course. So we have lots of different scholarship programs uh, available depending on your age and your interests. So I encourage you to check out our website at reaganfoundation.org slash scholarships. But now let's get into our content for today. I'm so pleased to have our moderator joining us today who's gonna to help us really narrow this conversation down. Tim Lan is a 2015 scholar, GE Reagan Foundation scholar. He is from Washington State. He's a Stanford grad and right now he is wheeling and dealing in Washington DC and making it all happen. So Tim, I'm gonna turn it over to you and you can introduce our panelists. Sounds great. Thank you so much, Aaron, and welcome. Welcome everyone to this uh, phenomenal scholarship chat that we're about to have. So before I introduce our three amazing panelists, I just, I, I wanna kinda introduce a couple themes that I hope that I think are really important and that shine through our conversation today. And uh, those two things are number one, the importance of organization when it comes to approaching the scholarship search. And number two, a willingness and a drive to search deeper than just the surface layer when it comes to finding money uh, for college. And I know from personal experience that finding money for college can be a very daunting task. And hopefully what you hear from our amazing panelists tonight helps and inspires you to look deeper uh, just beyond the well-advertised, maybe easy to Google and find scholarships. And it's not lost on me that we're hosting this panel, uh, the, the four of us here as a GE Reagan scholars and that this scholarship is one of the more uh, competitive ones out there. And I, I totally understand that. But guess what? If you get 20K from a GE Reagan scholarship or 10 $2,000 awards, both no matter which path you take, that's still $20,000 to help towards college. And so I hope that we have some future GE Reagan scholars out there in our Zoom room. I don't know if that's a thing, but maybe that can be a thing now, the Zoom room today. Uh, and, but regardless, we hope that you can take the lessons that our amazing panelists are going to give you today to find all sorts of different various scholarships and sources for uh, scholarship money today. So without further ado, let me introduce our incredible team of panelists. First up, we have Joel Burvell. Joel is a graduate of Yale University, where he studied molecular biology. And he is currently a second year medical student at Washington State University, where he also serves as the student body president. And he was a GE Reagan scholar as part of the class of 2013. 
Next up, we have uh, Jessica Bradley. And Jessica is a second year computer science major at Georgia Tech. Uh, she is a 2019 GE Reagan scholar and also a future software engineering intern at Amazon as part of the Amazon Future Engineer Program. And then last but very much not least, we have Carly Sines. And Carly is currently a senior music education major at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. She is a member of the Gamma Phi Beta sorority and she is a GE Reagan scholar as part of the class of 2017. So welcome panelists. And without further ado, let's jump right in. So I want to hear all of your uh, input on this, but Joelle, let's start with you. So I think the, the most important first question here is how would you frame the overall scholarship strategic approach for students? So we, we have these high profile, high monetary amount scholarship awards like Coca-Cola, like the GE Reagan scholarship. And then we have, you know, we have our local smaller, you know, school based $200, $500 awards, and then kind of this mysterious gray area that kind of has these mid, you know, mid level awards. And so what are your high level general thoughts on how students should approach this somewhat daunting world of scholarships? Definitely. First of all, Tim, thanks for the great introduction. Um, so I think you laid it out perfectly there in terms of the first step is understanding that there are different levels to the scholarships. There's the high levels, um, there's the mid levels, and there's the low levels. And that's not in terms of how much money they give or how easy or hard they are to get, but it just means that there's different levels of how recognized and known they are in the scholarship world. And I think so many people go after all the high level scholarships, meaning the ones that most people know about, that they forget to look in their own communities about at the ones that aren't often sought after. Um, so my go-to is always look for things like your local Kiwanis or your local Rotary Club. Almost every single one offers smaller scholarships um, of about like 1,000 to 2,000. And the application pool there is usually a lot smaller. The other thing is you should apply to all these different types. Even if you don't think you'll get a scholarship, putting together a scholarship application is helpful for the next one you put together. Um, I probably only had like two different essays that really rotated between and the word limits for different scholarships will be different. So you can put a 750, uh, 750 word essay together and adapt it to be 400 words or 250 words, whatever you need it to be. So just because you don't get a scholarship, um, even if you apply to it, that might be higher level, it doesn't mean you can't use it somewhere else. So I guess my biggest tip is go after every scholarship you can find out there and don't limit yourself. Awesome. Thanks, Joelle. Jessica, you want to jump in next? Yeah, absolutely. I think my biggest piece of advice is what I personally did was to treat um, searching for and applying for scholarships like my hardest class my senior year. Um, I put in a ton of time into researching things like do your research. There are so many different levels like Joelle was saying. Um, and then writing those essays and applying and taking the time, like that's a, it's a very time consuming process. So make sure you understand that. Make sure you're willing to put in that effort to go above and beyond um, so that you can, you know, come out with the, the scholarship pie. Awesome. And Carly? Thanks so much, Tim. I would say uh, one of my biggest pieces of advice is to just Google scholarships for high school seniors 2021. And there will be a list of scholarships there and you can pick and choose some might apply to you and more specifically some are a lot broader and um, you can do that for almost any those go all the way up through college too. there are even scholarships for current college students so you might have a lot of scholarships for your freshman year of college and then might be wondering how to pay for the remaining years of college there are scholarships for college students so even just googling scholarships for such and such or for your specific major or for an interest that you have. And that will help you find some of those scholarships to help you um, pay for your education. Got it, awesome. Thank you all, the, those were all uh, fantastic comments. And also I realized that I forgot to say this in the introduction and I see that we have a lively chat already, but if you're tuning in and you have a question for one of our panelists, please add it to the chat. I can't promise that I'll be able to get to all of them because we, we don't have a ton of time, but please add your questions and, and I can try and uh, incorporate those in. So moving right along, Jessica, a question for you. What are some surprising sources of scholarships? Yeah, great question. So I know that everyone's experience is very different, um, but I think the most surprising source of scholarships for me personally was my career and college counselor in that office. Um, during my senior year, I would make it a habit to go down to the office 
you know, two or three times a week and see what new scholarships were available that week. Um, and of course, larger scholarships that are out there are so awesome, like we've been saying, but we don't want to forget about those local ones because those can add up so quick. Um, and with that, reaching out to local organizations in my community, um, I even reached out to like banks in my community. I know that was a big one for me. Um, and you can even like create a small account and put in a little bit of savings so that you can apply to that scholarship. Like there are little steps that you can take um, to, you know, advance in, in this pursuit. And um, also looking at those local organizations, like I was just saying, those local businesses, um, clubs you're a part of. Um, for example, my town had like a local service organization that I applied to um, and they had or they had yearly scholarships and I applied to those. Um, there was a club I was in called DECA and they had, you know, corporate level scholarships that I applied to. Um, so just, you know, take advantage of your network, I would say, and do your research. And there's so many opportunities out there. Got it, Jessica. And if I can just ask a follow-up question to you, actually, because I I love that uh, I love that comment that you made about actually opening an account so you can apply for a scholarship. So you were obviously being incredibly proactive in your local community. What did the organization look like for you of you know trying to do initial searches in your local community of you know trying to find these places? Was were you cold emailing? Were you cold calling? You know, what, 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 what was your kind of just organizational approach to that? That's a great question. So um, my personal organization strategy was to have a very large spreadsheet um, with deadlines, you know, on one side and the name of the scholarship and the other side and the link attached to it. Um, and every single time, I mean, I, every single time I went out, I was on the pursuit of finding a scholarship because my one goal my senior year was, you know, I want to go to college debt free and I, I wanted to go out of state. So I knew it was going to be, uh, you know, an expense. So every single time I went out, like even if I was just running to the grocery store, like it was always in the back of my mind. And I had that spreadsheet ready. Like it was like on a shortcut on my phone. Um, so awesome. that was just having that mindset and being, um, I mean, I would love to say I was really strategic about it, but honestly, I was just thinking about it constantly and it wasn't even really a strategy. It was like, how can I get the most money? And, um, I mean, how can I achieve that goal of going to college uh, debt-free? And just jumping in there really quickly, I think Jessica hits on a really important point of keeping that spreadsheet. Even if you don't think a scholarship is relevant in that moment, put it down anyway. Um, I know I, was, I started looking for scholarships when I was a freshman inside high school, and there were some scholarships that weren't available till literally like my senior year of high school, or even in some cases until medical school. Um, but I put those spreadsheets down and I still use that same spreadsheet that I used years ago. And there's been things on there that I've applied for now because I heard about them years ago. Um, so that's one thing I'd say. And then the second thing is um, in terms of what uh, Carly was saying about like putting in the bank name plus in Googling it, um, do that for everything. Like think of a big brand, Nike, Coca-Cola, Pepsi, type in their name plus a scholarship and it's gonna come up with a scholarship. Almost every large corporate organization has some type of scholarship, some of the more identity specific, but a lot of them you can apply for um, and they might not be scholarships necessarily, they might be internships and things like that, but those are honestly the best kind because they can help build your resume by giving you a job maybe as in addition to actually giving you financial support for college or graduate school. Yeah. Those are all fantastic points. I, I was more of the pen and paper person, uh, personally, like I had a big, you know, piece of poster paper, like that would change each month. And that's what I was using to like write and track everything, but whatever, however you're doing it, whether it's pen and paper or Excel, uh, again, I, that goes back to what I think is, and all of us think is one of the most important things is just the organization of it because this is such a big world and if you're not putting it either pen to paper or in your computer notes it's just gonna you know deadlines are gonna fly by and everything moves very very quickly so thank you jessica and joelle wonderful points there carly a question for you what are some common misconceptions about scholarships and why is it important to not count yourself out for anything Thanks, Tim. I come from a small town, and so it's very common to think that a lot of bigger scholarships are going to go to people in larger populated areas and bigger cities. But um, by I found the Reagan Scholarship by Googling it, and I was fortunate enough to receive it. And so by receiving it, um, I was able to go to my dream college, which just happened to be um, not too far from home in state for me. Um, but there are so many different scholarships out there, local, state, national scholarships everywhere you're looking and not just rely on your hometown 
Um, cause, but being able to adopt the mindset of that, if it's, it's going to be a definite no, if you don't try for it. And that was one of the things that I actually brought the GE Reagan scholarship to my guidance counselor. I was like, look, here's a $40,000 scholarship. Um, I'm going to apply for it. And she actually wound up telling me, she's like, that might, that's probably going to go to a person from a larger community, not from a small town, middle of nowhere, Nebraska. And I was like, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and go for it. And um, I wound up proving her wrong and helping myself graduate college without any student debt and very thankful for taking the chance on it. So just take a chance. You're never, you never know what's going to turn out in your favor. That's awesome. And that actually, I think you, you even answered a bit of my next question that I was going to have for you, that if you're proactive about applying for, you know, several different scholarships and casting a wide net, it's just a simple fact that you won't win them all. I mean, mm -hmm. it's just, we're not going to win every single, you know, every single one that we apply for. So what is your approach when it comes to learning from maybe getting rejected for a scholarship and incorporating those lessons into your next application? And what sort of mindset do you adopt while you're casting this wide net of trying to, you know, get as many different sources of income for college as possible? Yeah, I think one of the things that I kind of tried to focus on was just remaining diligent in searching for that and start looking early. Um, I knew going in that I wasn't going to receive absolutely everything that I applied for because um, I was being realistic about it. And I wanted to make sure that um, I was putting my best foot forward and knowing that there were a lot of other people that were going to be putting their best foot forward as well. But um, you never know what a scholarship committee is looking for on the other end. And you might just be their perfect fit for that scholarship. And so always putting your best out there. Don't let rejection for a scholarship knock you down. Um, I've definitely experienced that, but there are also even just like $50 here, $100 there. You apply for those smaller ones. Those still add up, like you said. Um, and just keep your eyes on the prize of um, trying your best. And I know that kind of sounds cliche, but it really is the truth of um, trying your best and staying organized and persistent and not letting those small rejections get the best of you because there, while it might not work out in your favor, it's working out in someone else's and you never know when it's going to be your time to shine. So that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. And, and if I could actually add one thing to that, um, when it comes to the, the learning from the rejected scholarship applications, I think one of the key, uh, key life skills that, you know, th that is important to incorporate is when you get rejected for something, follow up and email and try and get an explanation of, Hey, you know, that's awesome. I hope the candidate that you chose for this job, or I hope, you know, the people that you chose for this are, you know, amazing, amazing people. I'm just curious for my own, you know, personal growth. What could I have done to better my application? I remember one time I got rejected for a scholarship and I emailed the person. It was like a local scholarship. And the feedback that I got was, hey, well, you know, we didn't love this essay and sort of the, the tone of voice that you were taking. And it was like, well, great. And then I read the essay again and was like, yeah, that's not a very good tone of voice. I should change, I should change that essay. And so, you know, the, I, I think that's a really important, uh, really important thing as well. So uh, Jessica, another question for you. So we've had a few questions come in from Instagram and uh, other social media sources about identity-based scholarships. So specific scholarships for members of the LGBTQ community, those with learning disabilities, those whose parents earn a, a middle to high income, et cetera. So what tips do you have for students when it comes to searching for scholarships that are specifically looking uh, for a, sub, a specific subset of the population? Great question. So I kind of want to bounce back to what I was talking about a little bit earlier um, and taking advantage of the opportunities offered by the groups you are a part of. Um, so you'd be surprised by, you know, like the organizations that offer scholarships, like in high school, <clears throat> excuse me, you're often a part of the groups that you're interested, right? So lots of those organizations and those affiliated corporations offer college scholarships. And it's as easy as, you know, thinking of the words, like words that describe you or characteristics that describe you um, or the corporations you love and adding the word scholarship to the end of it and Googling it like we were talking about earlier. So um, I know we were saying like Nike scholarship or like Taco Bell scholarships, even a thing like thinking of things like that, or even better, like scholarships for computer science students like me or scholarships for computer science Latinas like me, um, like the options are endless. And there's so many things out there, you just really have to do the research. 
Um, and in terms of like answering that question for looking for scholarships for like identity based um, groups or things like that, yeah, just going the extra mile doing the research, um, talking to your local local community, um, you know, leaders, talking to those counselors that can help you out. They're going to know the best steps for you to take. But on your own, you can always take the steps of doing the research. Um, and yeah, that's my best piece of advice there. Fantastic. And then maybe just a follow-up question to all of our panelists. So jump in, you know, whenever anyone has anything is I know there are tons of specific like scholarship search engines that exist out there and ways for you to kind of filter, you know, filter down to scholarships that may be more targeted to your interests, you know, different aspects of your identity and personality. Um, I know, you know, you've got your, your basic ones like scholarships.com. I know there's there's a there's a, an app service that's gotten a lot of attention recently. I think called Scholly that matches uh, that matches students to um, different scholarships. Did any of you use any of these in your in your search? And would you recommend any of them to to students right now? If not, so that's cool. one um, I think so. Scholly didn't exist when I was around. But it's one that I definitely tell students to use if they can. I think you do have to buy it now. Um, I actually know the person who started it. And it's kind of cool because he was a Coca-Cola scholar. And okay. the whole reason he started it was because he said, hey, I got this scholarship. There's so many scholarships out there. There needs to be a better way that's tailored for students to actually be able to find it. So Scholarly is a good one. One of my personal favorites um, that not many people know about is called peerlift.org. Um, and that's one, I can't remember who started it, but it's essentially sourced um, from students that have gotten these scholarships and they put it together in a list. And you can kind of go through by grade, 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th, um, by major, as Jessica was saying as well, um, and choose exactly what kind of scholarships you're looking for. I think it's really helpful because it's already kind of done the work of sourcing through it. There's students that have gotten it before you, so you know it's legit, which I think is another thing in scholarships, making sure um, that they're actually real. Um, and another one of my favorite strategies is honestly stalking people in a way that have gotten scholarships before you. LinkedIn is a huge asset. People put those scholarships on LinkedIn. If you go on LinkedIn and you find someone that's gotten a scholarship before you, you can literally go through their page, look at their awards, and you find other scholarships as well. If you find someone that maybe five years ago um, got a scholarship that you would have matched for, you can really use their profile um, if they've actually put those things out there figure out what they got and apply for the same things. So I think that's another unique way, but you kind of have to get creative in, try, in trying to find these things. Um, the scholarships are out there. Sometimes they don't do a good job of advertising themselves. So really making sure that people know you're on the hunt for it, you're putting yourself out there um, and making sure that you're always thinking about it. Awesome, thanks, Joelle. Jessica or Carly, did you wanna jump in at all with any, any other sources or if not, we'll move on here. I also look at um, I look in different magazines about the time scholarships normally do. Um, sometimes those, like even there might be an ad in a magazine or the newspaper or something. Um, we get the Omaha paper. And so sometimes I'll find scholarships and Omaha and Cambridge are like this in regards to um, the geographics of the state of Nebraska. And so um, there might be a scholarship that is opened up to the entire state, but that ad is going through a specific paper. And so getting access to uh, different resources that way will also be helpful. Awesome, fantastic. All right, uh, let's see, Joelle, how about let's throw it back to you. When most people think of scholarships, uh, they think of money for the traditional four years, you know, undergrad years of college. Why is it important to cast a wider net when you think about scholarships to not miss out on other opportunities? Yeah, definitely. I think we've been talking all about typing in scholarships when you're Googling things. I think just as important type in internships and opportunities like that. Um, I think I mentioned this before, but being able to both get money and build your resume, I mean, that's the best way possible. Um, I think one of, one of the things I did was I got a scholarship that was also an internship. They gave me two summers in Washington, DC they funded housing and things like that, but it also gave me the opportunity to work in different environments, in both health policy for one summer and then the second summer in an actual hospital. I think things like that, where you realize that scholarships can be so much more than just about the money. It can be about the experience you gain um, and also even about the family of people that you build around you afterwards. I think really understanding that, yeah, scholarships are great, but looking at internships, looking at other opportunities that are still within the same realm of helping you get to college or helping you pay for graduate school um, but can offer you other other um, sources of support as well. 
Fantastic. Jessica, maybe could you jump in a little bit on that too as well? Because I know you have some also some personal experience with this. Yes, absolutely. Um, I think that was a great point Joel was just making. Um, I'm also an Amazon Future Engineer Scholar, which is a scholarship that um, offers $40,000 for high school seniors for the next four years, um, as well as a software or guaranteed software engineering internship after their freshman year. I um, mean, that program is an amazing program and something I'm so thankful to be a part of because um, I mean, your freshman year of college, everyone's looking for an internship. So to have that security at the end um, for that following summer is incredibly comforting and <laughs> just awesome. So I, I would definitely recommend looking for those opportunities. And um, yeah, internships are so awesome and getting that experience can be so helpful. So yeah, I just wanted to ditto that. Okay, awesome. Well, then Jessica, I'll have another question for you here. So how can you use the experiences of students who are a couple of years ahead of you to help help you through the scholarship process? Awesome question. Yeah. Um, as a student with parents who didn't know much about, you know, current day college or scholarship applications, I often felt that I was at a disadvantage until I, you know, tapped into my network. Um, so my network was my greatest asset throughout the application process. Um, my older friends and my favorite professors as well, not just my friends, but, you know, tapping into like those teachers like that network as well, especially were incredibly important when it came to advice for applications or essay editing or interview tips and things like that. So I would 100% recommend reaching out to them as early as possible um, and, you know, kind of confirming that they could potentially help you in the future because um, they want to help you most likely. It's, it's a plus. Um, that they're usually a free resource. So definitely tap into your network and, and reach out because those people want to help. Awesome. Sounds great. Sounds great. So let's just kind of, because I know we're, we're running up against the clock here. So let's just kind of like all recap maybe the, the action steps or the ways to, to frame this in, in kind of in order of how we all go about the process of identifying a scholarship, determining what it's going to uh, determining what it's going to require when it comes to the application, you know, adding it to our spreadsheet and then moving forward. So I know I'm, I'm just kind of listing the steps right there. But so, OK, we, we all agree that the organization aspect is the most important part. So whether that's spreadsheet or whether that's on pen and paper. Then we then we have the proactive part. So we're going out, we're, whether it's like Jessica, we're actively thinking about it every day. We're in the community, you know, or we're, we're searching online, like what Carly was talking about, you know, finding different finding different sources. Then we kind of then go through a, like a shortlisting process where we say, OK, this one fits, this one doesn't. We add it to our spreadsheet and then we identify, you know, what, what they're going to need to what they're going to need to uh, have in the application. Um, and we, we build those scholarship materials. So maybe the last question, unless anyone wants to add anything to my uh, overall sort of organizational strategic approach, is creating sort of the base materials because all of the scholarship applications are going to generally ask for the same things. So what is all of your, you know, if you can just answer in sort of one minute, what is all of your personal approach to reflecting on um, the things that you've done, the assets that you have as a person, and condensing all that information and presenting it in a really uh, interesting and engaging way to a scholarship committee. What, how do you think about that and how do you go about that process? I would love to add something to the previously stated. Um, one thing that really helped me in high school was in my planner every single day, I would say like put aside 30 minutes or an hour for this application. I would make it know really concrete like a concrete plan for that for the future so that I made sure I kept, my, kept myself accountable um, for getting these things done right um, and then to answer the the next question which was the action items right was that what you asked sorry yeah, yeah you know it's all good action items as well as just you, you know we're always pitching ourselves to a scholarship committee and so, and we have those kind of base materials you have, like what Joel was mentioning, you know, a few different essays that you're going to reuse for different scholarships. How do you think about presenting yourself and keeping that organization, both uh, b the organization of the materials, both kind of consistent and also evolving as you're, you know, doing new things and getting involved in more things? Yeah, that's a great question. So I think everyone has a story. Um, my story was, you know, something I carried on throughout every single scholarship. There was like one kind of really big thing in my life that happened that affected me a lot and transformed me into who I, who I am today. Um, and that's something like 
I guess the foundation for all of my scholarships and all my applications. So I kind of just tweaked that for every single application. And it started by, you know, writing my prelim preliminary essay, um, showing my peers and my teachers, getting that feedback, and then, you know, revising it every single time. So those were the first action I Adam, sorry, action items I took. And then, you know, as I went on, I I started studying for interviews, I started taking the next steps. Um, it's a lot to keep up with. So it's kind of, for me, it was, you know, I, I took it as it came. Um, but yeah, just be organized, be diligent and keep everything in your planner for sure. Awesome, thanks, Jessica. Carly, you wanna, uh, you want to say something and then Joelle will close out with you. Yeah, um, one of the things that was previously mentioned was that a lot of the scholarships are going to ask a lot of the same things on essays. And so even if you have one, two, maybe three essays that are different across different scholarships, I name them as the question that they're being asked. And so um, like if they're wanting a personal statement about goals, then I'll, that's what I'll put as my title of my document that I have saved on my computer. So then I can go find that really quickly. Another thing that I make sure to do is to keep my resume updated. If I find something or think of something brand new, I add it and I make sure that it's clean and organized. And there are examples of some really good resumes out there online too. So just even the formatting of your resume can put you into the yes or no pile of a scholarship as well. Awesome. Yeah, and I'll, I think those are both great, great um, additions. One thing I would say is really know yourself. Um, I think the scholarship process is about showing who you are. And I think a lot of times people don't know who they are yet, right? Where you might be a high school student or a college student, and you're still trying to figure it out and that's okay. So using the people around you um, to ask some questions about, hey, if I told you to put my life into like one sentence, what would you say? And I did that a lot, like having, just talking to other people and then seeing what they told me and be like, well, I never thought about myself in that way, but that's a good way to frame it for someone who's never met me and is trying to understand who I am as a person, what values I hold and how I actually fit for this scholarship. Um, connected to that, make sure like to do a kind of brain dump of who you are, um, just things that make you you, um, things that you're passionate about, whether that's business or technology or medicine, whatever it is, putting that down. Um, and then lastly, do your research on the program you're applying for. So for example, the GE Reagan scholarship cares about leadership and integrity. So making sure you frame your essays around that. Um, and also even like looking at the name of it, it's General Electric and then Ronald Reagan. Who, who, are, who was that person? Who's that organization? Why are they coming together? Understanding that um, and actually putting that into your essays will make you stand out because other people won't have taken the time to do that research. And that is a phenomenal way to end this panel. So Joelle, Jessica, Carly, thank you all so much. Those were all uh, incredible insights. And Aaron, I will hand it back over to you. Well, thank you so much, each of you. Tim, thank you for leading us through that discussion. And Jessica, Carly, Joelle, I just am taking notes furiously. You always have great tips to share. So I know our audience was um, benefited a great deal from, from listening to you. So thank you so much for all of that information.